Hi, I am Maarten van der Ginten and um, today I like to show you how you can make a neat song sheet, a lead sheet, uh, with the use of Sibelius First. Sibelius First is uh, the little brother or sister of the um, nice notation program Sibelius. There's several versions, Sibelius and Sibelius Ultimate. Sibelius First is the free program uh, so anybody can use that and um, uh, I found out that if I make a template with the real uh, Sibelius you can make actually a pretty nice lead sheet and I think a lot of people will be happy with it uh, so I'm gonna show you through how this gonna work a lead sheet a song sheet at the moment that the real book came, we were all very happy. Suddenly, the lead sheets that we knew from the old days, they were either like piano sheets with simple ukulele chords or something like this, or they were fake books. And they were usually not well written down, too compact. You had to turn pages. The great thing about the real book was it was big. Everything was big and bold. You could see the structure of the song. As you see in this song, this is from the first real book, Afro Blue. It's four bars in a row. You can see the structure. Okay, this is first eight bars and then again eight bars. So it's really clear and it's all on one page. So that was really good about the real book. Later, the music printing on the computers started and in the beginning that was very bad. So most people really loved the handwriting. And um, so as soon as uh, programs like Finale and later Sibelius and now also Dorico came, this really got better. And there was no need to use the handwriting again. Some people still do it, but actually that's really outdated to still use uh, the so-called ink pen layout of the score. Since we have a great musical language of notation for 400 years, so why change that suddenly? Luckily, most people have dropped the ink pen by now and the jazz font. So the template I made is, is without the jazz font and without the ink pen, it's just the normal uh, uh, notation. Okay, let's go over to the template. You can download it here down the video. You can, um, there's a link to it. Um, and when you click on it, it opens. You see big bold fonts, big, chord fonts is almost as big as the stave and you see the structure of the song 4-4 four, four. and I put a, a 32 bar song there I have some chords here that are not so easy to construct in Sibelius first so you can grab them here and bring them up there and copy them okay so I thought it was best to take an example I'm gonna use I Got Rhythm by Gershwin we're just going to put that in and I'm going to show you around how you can do that in an efficient way. First of all, it's important to realize if you have a numeral keypad. If you don't have a numeral keypad, what happened to the keypad? Just a moment. Keypad. There it is. This corresponds with the numeral keypad on your computer. A lot of notebooks, MacBooks, and they don't have this numeral keypad. For that reason, they gave us the possibility to switch to uh, the, the shortcuts for laptop or notebook. So I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of using key commands, shortcuts, because as a musician, uh, you have to really be careful with your hands. And RSI is something you can't afford as a musician. So use as much as you can the shortcuts. So the first shortcut I'm going to show you here is command comma for Windows command is always um, control uh, so but I am I'm, I'm doing this on the Mac so it's command comma and that will bring us to the preferences now look here here is a possibility on the menus and shortcuts in the general menu and there you can make a choice standard or notebook when you use a notebook select that okay and also switch off the music it's the opening music you don't want to hear yet, I guess. So, and then enter, and then we are back. So now, instead of the numeral keypad, just the normal numbers on my keypad, they will bring me directly to the choice of one of those note lengths. So if I want a quarter note, I press four on my keyboard. 
You see? It will say like that. If I want a half note, I press five. If I want to have a sharp, I press eight. If I want to have a natural, I press seven. Okay? So the song is I Got Rhythm. And before we go any further, in order to prevent that I'm losing my template, I'm going to name this. I'm going to save, go to file, the purple section. You do always do that in the beginning and the end of your work. And then you say save as. And I type I got rhythm. Because if the computer crashes or something happens, then you already have a file with that name. And when you have auto save on, it will recapture that version. Okay, so it's I got rhythm. If you click on the name, it will become full screen. That's also a cool feature. So now we're gonna look at the song I got rhythm. I created an extra bar here and a bar zero, and I only use that for the upbeat. If there's an upbeat in the tune, I got rhythm. I got rhythm. It doesn't have an upbeat, so I can delete this bar. You just select it, and you do command backspace. It asks if you really want this because you could lose notes, of course, when uh, they are in there. And you say yes, you press enter. So now it's all 4 4 again. And the first thing we're going to do is correct the key. So for key, you press on very simple K. Easy to remember. It's in B flat, so you select B flat and then you click in the beginning of the score. Everything's in B flat. Okay? Then I press on T. That's the T for time signature it's a cut time 404 I select that one and again I press in the beginning of the score and you see now everything is selected it gets purple that means the whole score is selected it selects that usually until the next time signature and there was no time signature yet so uh, it selected everything and this just show you it's the whole score and to deselect just click in nothing you see now it's all deselected. Okay, the next step is the title. Double click on the title and backspace until the first letter. And then you write all caps. Right? So have the caps down, the, the caps lock on. I got rhythm. So traditionally you do that in caps for a song sheet because you want to have that clear. You want to see from a distance. Oh, that's that song. Unlock the caps and go to composer. I put the composer and the lyricist both on the right side. Traditionally, you put the lyrics on that side. I'm not doing this because I want to keep this space clean for that information. That's why I put the lyricist here. You can change that if you don't like that. So George Gershwin. And, and please always uh, give some respect to the composer. Fill that out. It takes a little time, but the good thing is it's George Gershwin and his brother, Ira Gershwin, who made the tune. Uh, the good thing is that you learn to spell the names right of composers. Okay, so I double click here and then with the arrows, arrow, I go to just after the D and then I backspace. It's of course not a ballad. I would say a medium up swing. And what's really nice about today is they try to give you as much as possible what you see is what you get. So it actually will turn the eight notes into swing, at least with the ultimate version. I'm not sure if it's here, but I, I guess it is. So it actually will play the eight notes as swing eight notes. And you can tweak also the, the swing in the ultimate program. So I would say 160. Okay, so we're all set to start with the notes now. Let's go to the notes. Well, there's one important thing to know. There are two ways to, to put in notes. You can do it with the keyboard, but you can also do it with the mouse. There's a very important shortcut, and it's the N. If you press the N, I just press the N, and you see what happens. There's a note, there's a shadow note now. And this shadow note is the note that you will put in as if I click now. If I click now, it will use this note length to put in the note on the spot where I am. You know, if I want a G here on the first beat, I click, there it is, yeah? That looks good and very intuitive. You say, oh, that's nice, oh, it's easy, I'm done. Well, that's true, you could do it like this, but 
it will involve a lot of clicking and it's not good for your hands. So I would like to show you the other possibility and that's the, the one with the keyboard, I'm putting it in with the keyboard. And I'm not talking about a separate keyboard, but I'm just the, talking about the keyboard of your laptop or your computer. But first we have to get rid of this shadow node. Well, if you want to get rid of it, you can press either escape or you can go in and out the shadow mode with the N. So the N is your important friend in the beginning, because in the beginning, then you want to select something and then you put in a note. You said, oh, I don't want to put in a note. No, I want to select it. So then press on the N. So as soon as you see the shadow, you know, whatever I do will bring a note in here. Yeah, so that's the, the, the big beginner's mistake. So the N is your friend here. Another friend is Command Z, undo. So I'm gonna undo this note. So that's always when you do something, always use that to go back instead of erasing things or something, just go back and then you know that you didn't change anything else. So N and Command Z are very helpful uh, keys. Now let's go over to the first note. Well, you see the shadow note. I got rid of the shadow note, N. So yeah, I'm gonna select the first note. The first note of I got rhythm is a rest. How do I get the rest? Well, you can go over here and press rest. Yeah. I think you can also press zero here. Uh, Yes, zero will, will do as well. Yes, and then after this, when I do this, the shadow node is back again, but that's no problem because you see this blue line here says, okay, here, here we are. So the next node, if I press on my keyboard, just F, it will put in a quarter note huh? because it's selected here, quarter note, a quarter note F. So I press F on the keyboard, F. This quarter note is connected with the beam to this. Unfortunately, there's no shortcut for a tie. This is a tie. You see the tie? Click. You see? Now it has a click. Now I want to have an eight note. I could press here, here but I don't want to use the mouse. I press three on my keyboard. Three, and then F again. See? The next note is a dotted quarter note. So I press four and period. Yeah, and that makes it a dotted quarter note. And it's a G. I press G. You see, so I put this note in without touching my uh, touchpad or my mouse. Yeah, the next note is still a dotted quarter note. That's the B flat. You see, um, and then the next note is an eight note. There are two possibilities. I click on the three, but I also can click on the arrow. And then I'm on the rest and I'm going to change the rest now in a note. So when a rest is selected and I press a note, it will replace that by a note. So that's also a way to do it. And now I press again on tie. I press on four again because I want to have a quarter note again. And that's it. And I'm to check if it's right, I click on the rest. And whenever you have something selected and you press the word P, that's the P of play. So from that sp spot, he will play. So we can listen. Okay. And when you press space, it will stop again. So usually when you press play, it will, it will uh, press the space bar and you have nothing selected. It will just play from wherever you were. But if you have something selected and you press P, it will play from that spot. So that's also a good thing to know. So the first phrase is done. Before we go on with next note, I'm gonna do something with the chords. If you double click this chord, you can edit it. So what you see here is what I type when I put the chord in. So I wanna have a B, uh, B flat six here. Yeah, B flat six, B flat. So a B is a B and the second B is a flat, and B flat six. And then I press space to go to the next chord. See? And the next chords could be G minor, the next chord C minor, you see, this is what I type, the next chord F7. So that's just simple typing and space, you go to the next chord. And then later you can adjust the spacing a little bit. You see? By the way, I didn't tell it, but if you want to edit these notes, uh, if you've made a mistake or whatever, you can just select it and use the arrow keys up and down to, to change them. If I enter a note on my keyboard, it will add the nearest note that you pressed 
diatonically to a place where you were. Or when there was a chromatic note already in the bar, it will use that chromatic information. This is all diatonically within the key. Huh? So it's this is a B flat, it's not a B, you know? So when I go with the arrows, it does it all like this. If it's an octave too high or too low, I press command arrow up or arrow down. You see, then it is a, an octave. And when I have some chromatic information there, for instance, when I like make this like, let's say it was uh, sharp, you know, if I go an octave up, it will keep that chromatic information. That's very handy if you have a chord or something, then you don't have to redo that chromatic information, you know. And if I want to get rid of the chromatic information, I just select that and just do backspace, then it's gone. Okay, so I have the first phrase. I'm gonna put this here because it has to be above the rest. You see how smoothly like the form thing magnetically is pushed away. Now I'm gonna select these two bars. How do I select the two bars? First click in the first bar in nothing. When you click in nothing on the bar, it will select the whole bar. Then I go to the second bar and I hold shift down. Yes, I have the first two bars selected. And uh, I already have three big friends, the command Z, the N, and but this is my third big friend, uh, and that's the key command R, the R of repeat. I press R, boom, you see? Uh, so this is a very quick way of, of copy and paste. I, of course, I could first select it, then then do command C, and then I select the second bar, and I would have to do command V. Uh, that's the copy and paste methods you all know from the computer. This is much easier, much faster. And then I'm gonna see what I have to tweak here. Well, I'm gonna put a D in the base here because I know that's in the original, so slash D. You don't have to use shift to make it the capital because it will do it itself. Um, and then, of course, the notes are not right. So it's reversed to da da di di da da da. So this one has to be a C. And it will take the tight note along with him. That's also really nice. You see? So now we have the first four bars. If you click on a bar, it will select the bar. If you click twice, you take the whole stave. And by the way, if you click three times, it selects the stave throughout the song. So that can sometimes be really handy. Uh, but now just click two times. And then we press R again. So I could also uh, select just this one, you know, and then do Command C and then Command V, like a paste. You know, that's also a, that's an alternative. But the other was also a possibility. That's actually quicker than this. But then I have something here, and uh, and then I have to get rid of that again. But that doesn't really matter. So this is the same. Only this is out and this chord symbol is different. It's actually, most people are surprised that it's this. It's a C half diminished. The C half diminished in this template, you can reach by C half dim. That looks a little bit that like a lot of work, but you'll see why I do this, because now it makes this nice C half diminished sign with an F in the bass. If I put in C minor seven minus five, it will actually write C minus seven flat five and it doesn't use this nice thing here. So um, that's the nice thing about the template. Then I have to change the melody here. So edit the melody. This is an eight note, select it and press three. It's an eight note now. And then the next note is an E flat, but that's a quarter note. Oh, sorry. So uh, take care now. I have to go to this. You could don't see um, the blue stripe now. So I have to first select that one I that, and then I make that a quarter note. That's a little bit counterintuitive, but so, and then I press the E, it's the E flat. And then again, because this is the last note in the bar, if I would, so when I press three and then I press uh, C and then again four and then three again. Oh, sorry, that has to be, if I make a mistake, just go, go back and um, make four, do, do, do. and the next one is B flat. Oh, sorry, it was still there. So yeah, that's it. 
So you see, the shadow node is back again. I want to get rid of it. Boom. Yeah. Now I can add the chord here. A shortcut to add a chord, select a node, and command. Well, you would say command C, but that's already given away to command copy. So it's going to be command K, chord, <laughs> chord with the K. You see? And now I can type the chord, and it's in this case a B flat uh, with an F in the bass. And then again, two spaces, F7, F7, and again, that B flat 6. What I could have done also, going back, you know, if I double clicked on this one, click, click, and then space, you know, then I'm, and then I'm sure that, that the chord is lined up with the other chords. So that's your choice, whatever you want. Okay, so that's the first A. Um, this was the most work, actually, because for the second A, you're just gonna select the thing and just press our friend R. A2 is there. And it happens to be the same in this tune, so don't worry about that. Only the lyrics will be different. Later we will put in the lyrics. We still have this selected, and we're gonna use our friend R again. Actually, we're gonna use it again twice. R, R. So the, the last A is a little bit different. We're gonna change that later. But the rhythm of the tune is constant. The bridge has the same rhythm, so we all put a lot of effort in putting in that rhythm, and we're gonna use that. Just gonna edit it, that it's gonna be the bridge. So this is a very quick way to do this. Yeah, so now we're gonna tweak the notes in the bridge. First of all, the chords. It's a D7 there, D7. And then we're gonna lead this one, this one, and this one. And um, this is gonna be a G7. G7, okay, delete that one, delete, delete. And we have to change the notes now. And by the way, if you select more notes, in this case the whole bar, and, and you, you see, you can use the arrow keys to go up. If you would have a sequence, for instance, if you have a certain melody and four bars later it's a sequence, then you're gonna select the whole melody and just press on the arrow up and it will bring all the notes diatonically up. Uh, you see that a lot of melodies are constructed that way and it's so nice putting in a song in Sibelius because it kind of forces you to analyze the song and it's actually fun to analyze it because analyzing will actually help you to do less work and yeah we're lazy we want to have want to do something else with that time we want to make music instead of sitting behind the computer so analysis actually helps you know first it's a d ta da da d so I have to, that's a d so d d i did it with the mouse now i shouldn't do that i do it with the, the arrows so it has do 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 d but it da, da, da. Of course, that's a diatonical note because we are in B flat. So we have to change that to E. Uh, so that's a, that's a natural sign. The natural sign is the seven. So press this natural sign. So the note that's tied there is doesn't go automatically along. I don't know why that is. So there are two things you could do. You could take the mouse and select this one and get rid of it. I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna touch the mouse. So the, the, the non-mouse method is just Use the arrow, go to the next note, and bring it up and down again. So since I used the, the, this chromatic information in this bar, by default it goes diatonically, but if there's chromatic information, it will think that you're gonna use that chromatic information in that bar. So that's a way to do it without the mouse, okay? Again. Da -da 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 -da. Da, da. You see, I have the first half of the bridge. So I double click on the first bar and I just do R. And take care, leave that selected. Why leave it selected? Because we want to transpose it. It's, it's a note too high, you know. I could press, uh, go with a note down now, but then you see it makes uh, a D sharp and the chords don't go along. There's a better way to do it. Uh, so I go back. I have the shortcut, Shift T. And Shift T is transpose. 
And by the way, all these things you can all reach within the ribbon. They call this the ribbon. For the ribbon, you use your mouse. I just want to uh, prevent you from doing that. But in case you forget it, you can just go to the ribbon. So this one, for instance, I cancel it for now. It's about note input. And then I can go to this transpose thing. And you see here, when you keep your mouse on it, it will show you the actual shortcut. You see Shift T. So Shift T or click on this. And then it asks me, you want to transpose by key or by interval? The transpose by key is what you use for a whole section and if you also want to change the key signature. We don't want that in this case. So if you have a Sibelius file and it's in the wrong key, you just make sure that nothing is selected and you press Shift T and then you get this menu and you say instead of B flat, you know, we, we could make the song now in E flat. And it will make the selection, or if you have not selection anything, the whole song, into the key of E-flat. So the key signature will also be in E-flat then. But in this case, the key signature, we don't want it to change, so we say transpose by interval. And then I choose where it goes. Well, it has to go a, a tone down. So it has to go down, and it has to go a major second down. Yeah, so I select second here, and then I press enter. So you see, the melody went down, and the chords went down. The only thing we have to change now is that note. So yeah, so now let's check the whole bridge. So select that, just press P. Old man trouble, I don't mind him. You won't find him round my door. Oh, wrong. This is round my door. This is just a half note, so this five. And then this is a half note rest so so I make press five and zero cool so we're almost there now we only have to get rid of the shadow again uh, the rest so um, here I have the scores and the things well we're not going to use that for now uh, so we can get rid of all this uh, this thing when, if you want to erase stuff just select the bar and do backspace and here also Select the bar, backspace. And by the way, for, for non Sibelius first users, I, I in, in this template, there's also an alternative way of putting in chords. So, well, I go back for a moment. If you see those chords, you see a C minus 10 or E flat Lydian or this kind of things, you cannot construct it. So even in Sibelius Ultimate, you would have to make them yourselves. And in this template, there is a, a chord alternative mode where you can put in an alternative chord, so that's nice to know. But we're not gonna use that, so let's get rid of it. By default, these are too small, you know, so make them back like 32 or something, you know. So that, go away, all away. And it's actually handy because this song has two bars extra in the end, so the two bars happen to be here already. The only thing we have to do is erase this bar line. You can change the style of bar line. Select a bar line, yeah and uh, then go up here to notations and uh, I don't know if there's, there's no shortcut for that um, and you go to notations and there you can make your choice repeat double or final this was a final actually I have to delete it so I can select it and do delete and then this will be the last bar so this one I'll make final and then the only thing that I don't like now is that uh, these two bars are that broad. Well, there's also a thing to tweak that. Just click just behi behind the bar, you see? And then suddenly there's this little square and then you can grab it by the square, grab them, grab them by the square. So now it has 10 bars. We have to change this a little bit. I guess it's like this. And then put this one. And then uh, three. Oh, sorry, that was long. 
Yeah, sometimes when you don't see that blue thing, you're still working on this selection. That sometimes you, you go wrong with that. So now I first have to use the arrow to select that, that I'm sure that I'm in this part, and then press three, and then it's D, and now it's just the, the funny, nice Gershwin note. It's not a C now, but it's a B. So I press seven, which makes it a B, and a B, and actually, oh, I forgot to select the, the length of the note. Let's go back. So I press again, seven and four, and then a B. Oh wait, I go back. It is actually a quarter note here. Well, I should make this a dotted. Uh, yeah, I think that's in the original, it's like this. Uh, an eight note, that's it in the original. So and now seven, yeah, and then, so ta, 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 da, da, ta, that is the same as it is here. So press N and copy this. Okay, I have the chords right away. Okay, so that's it. That's the tune. Only the chords here. So this is more something like, yeah. And then this is probably a D half dim with an A flat in the bass. And this is a G7 then. Yeah, most people will probably play C minor here in this case. So that, that could be like C minor 9, just to show that. But that's up to you. So that's the tune. That's cool, isn't it? But we still have the lyrics to go. So quickly go to the lyrics. Lyrics are a really important part of the tune, so don't um, skip that. Even if you're not singing them, it's nice to know what the song is about in any case. And that's one of the things of the real book that was really a pity, but I do understand it because they all had to do it by handwriting and they couldn't do it as fast as we can do it because I'm going to show you how you can do this very fast. So select the first note, where, which has a lyric, so that's going to be I, and then you already know it. I mean, we had K for key signature, we had T for time signature, we have command K for chords. Uh, so what could be the lyrics? Command L. Here we go, command L, you see? And now just type the lyrics here and make sure you always type an extra space whenever there is a tie. So if I put I now, I, and then I have an extra space and then it has this this nice long thing that says for the melismatic notation this is still the same word you know and then i got rhythm and so on yeah this is a lot of work but it can be done so if you made a leech of your own tune you have to do this work but we are living the time where we can all share our information so our information is on internet so we go to internet and we just download the lyrics of i got rhythm and it's very easy to put that in this song. I'm gonna bring you to internet and I just type uh, lyrics I got rhythm which work best I think the EZ, EZ lyrics always work fine you see I got rhythm here this is the first but here is the chorus like this is the first he starts the chorus here, yes. I copy that, very important shortcut too. I found out that a lot of people don't know that. If you press Command Tab, it will bring you back to the last program you're working with. So it's very easy to go, instead of going down with my mouse and select the other program, just do Command Tab. And you see, it brings me to Sibelius. If I wanna go back, Command Tab, Command Tab very useful now I'm gonna paste it when there's a tie press space yeah so command V there you are space command V command V command V space because there's a tie command V space command V command V command V space I got my man who could ask for anything more again I Space flat E. Space. Oh, I forgot to space. Oh yeah, when you forgot to space, then you have to do first do uh, Command Z. You have to select this one, 
and then do space again and green pastures space I space got my man who could ask for anything more there are a lot of uh, uh, ties here so uh, but sometimes there are no ties so you can just hold down the command key and just do v v v v v v v v v and you're done sometimes it's just like 20 seconds and you have the lyrics there i know a lot of singers are very grateful now like oh it took me hours to type that it's, there's no use it's just simple bum space then bum bum space bum space bum 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 space it's almost a rhythm bum space bum 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 space bum bum oh mistake it's always a pity when you make the mistake space space round and around yeah and then i have space boom 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 space boom 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 no i did it wrong again uh, 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 i want to go too fast sorry for that thank god make sure you use command z there otherwise you will lose your clipboard don't erase it so it's actually good that i made a mistake that you know how to do i've got sweet dreams i got space who could ask for anything thing more and then and the lyrics we just copied now it's gone so this we have to type or we can go back and copy that again so so we're lazy so this is what we do command tab uh, select this one or no you can do to go here and do space and then who could ask for anything more Yes, we're done. Yeah, that's it, actually. Uh, just one last thing. Now you want to print it, you can print it. Um, but usually you want to save it as a PDF. Uh, Sibelius first doesn't allow you to do that. So in, normally you could go here, you could go back to the purple section, like the file, and you could, uh, you could share it or export it. But the export is uh, only MIDI or Scorch. By the way, Scorch is really nice and you can read it on your tablet and you can still transpose it on your tablet. So that's a good thing. It's a program you buy, I think, for an app for two euros or something. And most people will probably have it as a, as a PDF and it doesn't allow you to do that. But uh, they ain't got me yet. I just press print and then when I press print, down here you see use OS dialog. And then you can select save as PDF so I can save it as algorithm yes here we are so we made it sometimes you have to tweak it a little when you select everything and you make the distance between the staves it will do that to all staves if you don't select everything it will do this sometimes that's needed of course want to leave it as much as possible that all the distances are the same but you see now with the last thing I did it had a little bit more room that so the, the chord symbols don't interfere with the lyrics if the lyrics are too big that sometimes happens you can select the lyrics if you select one part of the lyrics and you use the shortcut shift command a and it will take all the lyrics at least of the stave you can also oh the, I didn't show that key command a shift P it will give me a panorama view then I don't worry about the layout I just worry about the notes this is the panorama view and if in the panorama view I do shift command a oh first I have to select something I select the lyric there so I should take the last one and then I go to text and I can change the size a little bit if it's too big if it's too much interfering with the rest you know I can make it a little bit smaller so you see now they are a little bit smaller and also you always have to tweak a little bit that it's not interfering with each other but usually because of the magnetic layout they make sure that they're not over each other you know so i think this is a pretty neat part now i hope we're going to see a lot of nice clean sheets in the future i hope you like it have fun with it bye bye <laughs>